Welcome back to the Evolving Warfighter as we continue our series, A Leader's Guide for Addressing Suicide. I must ask you, as a leader, could you recognize the common medical illnesses or injuries that may increase the risk of suicide among your soldiers? Stay tuned for that's what we'll be discussing on this episode of the Evolving Warfighter. Through the course of human evolution, mankind has increased its cognitive abilities. I believe it's the higher level thought processes and the ability to use logic that allowed mankind to dominate other species on this planet. When I approach the topic of suicide, I typically do so using rational thought. If I have a suicidal soldier, I ask them to explain basically where they find themselves in the world. Where do they think they are? How do they view the situation? And then I use rational thought to explain maybe the situation is not as bad as they perceive it. Or explain how the situation may be different and give them data that they didn't already have. This allows them to rationally fight their way out of a suicidal mentality. However, this might not always be possible. Individuals are not always capable of rational thought. And this may be caused by either medical illnesses or injuries. Trauma applied to the brain, chemical imbalances, drugs, alcohol, can all impact our rational ability to have thoughts. Therefore, if we're dealing with an individual that's suicidal, or we witness medical illnesses or injuries among our soldiers that may increase the risk of suicidal thought, we need to take the time to ensure that the underlying medical conditions are being addressed. We'll begin by talking about traumatic brain injury, a very common injury in the military that may significantly increase the risk of depression among our soldiers. If we look at the various activities that our soldiers engage in in their daily life, it should be no surprise that there's a tremendous number of traumatic brain injuries generated in the military. Even when they're safe back home out of combat zones, they engage in driving vehicles, which can lead to traffic accidents and concussions. We ask them to stay physically fit, and we often engage in sports activities that may cause collisions among soldiers. We might ask them to do things such as combatives, which may lead to strikes to the head. And then when we place them into combat, they have additional threats. Whether it's the threats of actually physical objects hitting the head, or being exposed to pressure waves from blasts and explosions. Head injuries are serious business, and they need to be treated as such. If you have a soldier that experienced head trauma, especially one that might have caused unconsciousness, they need to be quickly assessed by medical professionals. The treatment protocols recommended for concussions need to be taken seriously. The potential for serious long-term injury to the brain dramatically increases if we do not protect an individual with a traumatic brain injury and they go on to have one or several other traumatic brain injuries. This will interfere with the healing process of the brain. If we think about it, the human brain is nothing more than a very soft and delicate organ hidden inside the protective shell of the skull. While there are some degree of shock absorbers built into the human body, those shock absorbing capabilities can be quickly overwhelmed. The soft tissues of the brain can be damaged, whether this is damage to the neurons themselves, the cells that conduct electricity in the brain that allows us to think, have ideas, or remember events. And it also can damage the blood vessels, the blood supply, the things that carry oxygen to the brain to allow it to function, and it removes waste products from the brain as well. If either the neurons or the blood flow gets interrupted in the brain, you are going to have a vast degrade in cognitive ability. One complication about dealing with a TBI injury, especially post-combat, is a lot of the same symptoms that are experienced in TBI are also present in post-traumatic stress disorder. A lot of times, soldiers can be misdiagnosed with PTSD when it's really a traumatic brain injury or a combination of both. Soldiers that have experienced a TBI are likely to have problems with their brain function. This may include things like having difficulty controlling their emotions. It might also be having difficulty accessing their memory. All of a sudden they're faced with a situation where they used to be able to do a task very well and now they can't seem how to remember it. Or they realize they've lost a certain degree of proficiency, which can be very frustrating. 
These individuals may lose their ability to have long-term planning or to think ahead or even to appropriately diagnose what's going on around them, basically see the reality of the world as it is. For this reason, individuals that have experienced TBIs are an increased risk for suicide because they simply do not have the rational grasp and safeguards that may present a rational individual from killing themselves. They may have difficulty controlling their emotion to a degree where it just overrides their rational abilities. For this reason, if you have a soldier that's experienced a TBI, I ask you to take it very seriously and act as a good leader. Follow the medical protocols very carefully. If you have a soldier that experiences a concussion, they will often tell that soldier to rest and relax for several days and not engage in their brain function. Basically, try to do as little as possible to allow the brain to start healing itself. So you as a leader need to ensure that that soldier just doesn't go back to their room and start playing that really intense Xbox game. They really need to take the protocol seriously because it can have very significant long-term impacts on their mental health and their cognitive abilities. Leaders may be tempted to ask these soldiers to violate medical protocols because they perceive that they really need this individual to participate in the mission. But I ask you, please treat this as a serious injury. Please safeguard your soldiers and take it serious. If you have an individual experiencing TBI, please take due diligence to safeguard them and ensure that they're not taking actions that will harm themselves. While definitely not as likely as traumatic injuries to the brain, diseases to the brain inside the military population also occurs. Diseases such as brain tumors or neurological disorders such as dementia can greatly increase a soldier's risk of suicide. In the case of brain tumors, the tumor itself can displace brain tissue and it can interrupt the blood flow to the brain. And it can also increase the amount of pressure itself that the brain can be pressed towards the base of the skull, resulting in emotional instability. It should be fairly obvious that when you're dealing with an individual that's suicidal as a result of a brain tumor, removal or addressing the tumor through medication should be the first priority. Neurological diseases such as early onset dementia can also have traumatic impacts on our soldiers. Not only does this disease interfere with the accessing of memory, makes it more difficult to do day-to-day -day tasks, the soldier in question also faces the fact that they will soon be removed from the military. So not only does this individual suffer from problems accessing their memory, their whole context of their life or their self-identity is threatened by this new disease. It is very likely that these individuals will suffer from depression, from the disease itself, and from having to transition out of the military. Depression and thoughts of suicide among our soldiers may also increase from other medical conditions. If they're taking medications, these medications may affect their brain chemistry. While many medications help deal with the initial injury, the side effects can be traumatic in terms of the ability to think or the ability to have emotional control. When we're talking about a medical reason for suicide, we have to address chronic pain. Chronic pain management is definitely a condition that can lead to thoughts of suicide. While there are great medications out there to try to address chronic pain or significant pain among individuals, it may interfere with their ability to take joy of the simple things in their life. While I believe it's totally appropriate to try every attempt to remove pain from an individual, we must do so in a way that doesn't cripple them in terms of their psychological and mental health. It's very difficult, especially with the overuse of opiates in our American society, to treat pain. This leads us into our final topic of dealing with chemical addictions. This might occur through the lawful use of pain control medications or may also occur from the use of illicit drugs or alcohol. It's fairly easy to see how chemical dependence can occur in the use of prescription drugs, illegal drugs, and even alcohol because it plays on basic brain chemistry. We're going to take the example of opiates. Opiates are a prescription drug that stops pain channels but also plays upon the dopamine channels in the brain. Dopamine is a chemical that causes you to feel relaxation and a sense of euphoria. When an individual takes opiates, their brain is flooded with dopamine, a chemical that makes them feel good. Unfortunately, what this does is it desensitizes the dopamine receptors inside the brain. 
When we engage in everyday activities in our life that we enjoy, dopamine inside the brain is created, and we feel joy in that activity. However, if you are on opiates or other chemicals that cause a mass release of dopamines, when we engage in those same activities, we don't receive as much joy in them compared to the use of the drug. This may cause individuals to chronically seek out using the drug because they associate the being on the drug with that feeling of relaxation, euphoria, and pleasurable experiences. The more you take the drug, the more the brain reinforces the connection between that drug and feeling good. As the pleasure in our everyday lives decreases because of that drug use, our mind grows more and more dependent or connected or drawn to that idea of that substance because we want to feel good. The good news is we can break the cycle of dependence, however the process sometimes can be painful. In the case of an opiate addiction, you have to refrain from the use of opiates. For a while, an individual won't get much joy out of life because their dopamine system has to become resensitized. Addiction can occur with prescription pain medication, illegal drugs, and alcohol, depending on the quantity that's consumed. As military leaders, we need to be particularly concerned with individuals that are taking mass amounts of drugs or alcohol in an attempt to escape cognition. What I mean by that is they feel so depressed with their life that they basically want to escape to this high or euphoria by using a chemical substance. An example of this might be a soldier that expressly admits they, they want to go get blackout drunk because they want to forget about their life. It should be fairly obvious the dangers connected with attempting to escape cognition through the use of drug and alcohol abuse. Mass amounts of use of drugs, whether legal or illegal, or extreme amounts of alcohol can lead to medical conditions that can result in death. It is rather tragic, especially when we look at the individuals that are using either alcohol or drugs in an attempt to escape their reality because they are, find themselves in such a state of depression, because really all they're doing is just taking a momentary break from that reality. They're consuming the last of their precious resources trying to escape their lives, but when they come to the next morning, their life will be much worse. They'll wake up in that same problem, they'll have that same depression issues, but however this time, they'll have that craving for that drug or alcohol, and they'll have even less resources to meet the needs of that addiction or to attempt to resolve the problems that they find in their lives that are causing the root of that depression. I need to take a moment as a military leader to do it aside and say, the military needs to really take a look at our consumption of alcohol. Now, I'm not one that supports prohibition. I don't want the banning of all alcohol. But I want to ask you as military leaders to consider not drinking around your soldiers. I'm going to give you several reasons for doing so. The first reason is you probably have soldiers inside your formation that have problems with alcohol consumption. Much of the latest research is saying that about a quarter of our military is consuming alcohol at dangerously high levels. Whether this is a constant use of alcohol or binge drinking, it brings up a major concern. As military leaders, we need to take a look at the culture we build surrounding the use of alcohol. When we have MWR functions, when we bring families together, when we're just hanging out with our soldiers, maybe we should consider not having alcohol there. That way our younger soldiers that are underage don't necessarily connect the action of drinking with that of being a soldier or a military service member. The next reason I give you for considering not drinking around your soldiers, it is likely that you have members inside your unit that may be going through programs such as Alcohol Anonymous. Having another individual, especially one in a leadership position that is constantly turning down the use of alcohol, would make it easier for these soldiers to also turn down alcohol without having to explain or admit that they have a use of alcohol in their attending programs like AA. I ask you to be mindful about the consumption of alcohol in your units and whether or not alcohol is being forced on unwilling participants. Ensure that you have created an environment inside your military units where individuals can turn down drinks. Let it be known that anyone can deny the use of alcohol. That alcohol use is not required to be part of the unit, part of the team, or part of the group. My final reason for suggesting not drinking around your soldiers has to deal with legal issues. Obviously, a single DUI can destroy what should have been a promising military career. The more we use alcohol, the more likely we are to incur situations where sexual assault or sexual harassment could be involved. As military leaders, we just don't want to be involved in that type of activity. And if those type of situations arise, 
with your soldiers, you want to be the one in the room that's sober, that can assess the situation, especially when someone comes to investigate. You don't want to be the one saying, as a military leader, I was intoxicated too, I can't remember what was going on, I didn't do the right thing because I was under the influence of alcohol. Consider taking these actions to slowly disconnect the connection of the military culture with the use of alcohol. And maybe one day we'll see a much needed decrease in the high level alcohol consumption among our soldiers. As a military leader dealing with potential suicide soldiers, it's complicated when there's underlying medical conditions. When you notice or believe that there may be an underlying medical cause or addiction causing a depression and suicidal thoughts of your soldier, make sure you contact and get medical professionals involved in the treatment and care of that soldier. If you have a soldier struggling with addiction, turn to the Army Substance Abuse Program, or ASAP. You can even consider using civilian-style addiction programs to help you as a military leader. Alcohol Anonymous is a great resource for those struggling with alcohol, although there is a whole host of other civilian resources. So take the time to take a look around your community and see what could be offered to help and support your soldiers. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please subscribe to The Evolving Warfighter if you want to see more videos on this topic and other topics concerning military self-development. As always, I ask you to continue your self-development so we can ensure that we can dominate the modern battlefield.